So today the question is, what is the difference between sociopathy and psychopathy? You may have heard the term sociopath and psychopath. Now we consider sociopathy and psychopathy distinct categories that refer to somebody who would be eligible for the diagnosis antisocial personality disorder. So let me start with that. Let me start with antisocial personality disorder. This is a personality disorder that's typified by a lack of empathy. So it's when an individual has difficulty forming close relationships or cannot form close relationships and can't understand the feelings of another person. That's the empathy part. They can't understand by looking at somebody, by interacting with somebody, how they feel. Also, people with antisocial personality disorder are more likely to break laws, to violate the social norms of society, uh, and to have other mental health conditions. We call them comorbid conditions. Those are conditions that go along with a primary diagnosis. So where's the difference between sociopathy and psychopathy come in? Well, we look at sociopathy as a learned condition. We believe it's oftentimes caused by trauma. So somebody who has sociopathy likely would not have been born with it, but rather they develop it as a product of their environment, of stressors in the environment. Oftentimes traumatic experiences when the individual is young. Psychopathy we tend to think of as more a condition based on genetics. Somebody with psychopathy is typically born that way. And there's some differences as well in terms of how somebody with sociopathy and somebody with psychopathy relate to people. Uh, usually we think of somebody with psychopathy as unable to form close relationships. And they just can't do it. Whereas somebody with sociopathy struggles in that area, but they can form meaningful close relationships, particularly with people uh, that they've known a long time. Some other differences when it comes to the criminality. Usually with psychopathy, uh, we think of the criminality as planned out. They carefully plan out crimes. And usually these are crimes where they're stealing or something like that. They're not often uh, horrendous violent crimes, although sometimes, of course, they are. Most of the times they're crimes that involve uh, using a charming personality and being manipulative and trying to steal. But either way, there's a lot of planning. And somebody with psychopathy is aware of the consequences and considers the consequences usually before they commit a crime. As they're planning out the crime, they, they think about how not to get caught. Somebody with sociopathy does not tend to think about the consequences. The criminal actions are usually more impulsive and they have a lot of anger and other emotions, anxiety and depression, a lot of mood dysregulation tied in with criminal acts. Somebody with psychopathy tends to be fairly calm, even when exposed to distressing stimuli involving the crime. Somebody with sociopathy is distressed. They're not calm uh, when committing a crime, not always. They don't have the same cold, calculated feel that somebody with psychopathy would have. So sociopathy and psychopathy both related to antisocial personality disorder, but they describe a different etiological picture, meaning the cause of the illness, we believe that's different, and the way the symptoms manifest are different as well. So there does appear to be significant differences between sociopathy and psychopathy. And it may be useful to understand these differences when working in mental health, in some cases when looking at people that have antisocial personality disorder. So those are some of the differences we see between sociopathy and psychopathy. I hope you found this to be useful. Thanks for watching.